back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we got a, uh, a little mini batch of meatloaf here. Got a few items, uh, some interesting things. And um, also uh, I want a big uh, thank you uh, to all those folks out there that uh, bought the uh, kind of fundraiser uh, Epic Egress t-shirts uh, that I'm peddling right now. So uh, excuse my sales, but uh, it really helps with the shop move and uh, I appreciate the folks that, uh, that bought t-shirts and then uh, folks that don't like t-shirts and don't like uh, wearing advertising. Uh, a few folks sent me some, uh, some, uh, some scratch through PayPal. So once again, it's all appreciated and it will go to good use uh, for relocating the shop. But let's, enough sales talk, let's uh, do a little bit of meatloaf because I know you guys are hungry for meatloaf and we'll look at a couple cool items. So you might ask, it's a desk. Why is he showing us a desk? Well, in the process of all this moving stuff, um, we had to get this down from uh, upstairs in the, uh, in the living space here in the shop. And this is a, an old steel case uh, tanker desk. Um, and it's built like 1940s uh, battleships uh, are built. Anyway, uh, it's pretty heavy, so uh, and you got to get kind of clever when you're old and creaky like me, right? So what I wanted to show was uh, um, something that I used that actually worked out really good. And uh, let me grab it real quick here. And um, I mentioned before that, that, uh, that the, uh, the pig uh, absorbent folks, pig matting folks, um, uh, you know, they, they sponsored the channel a little bit. They sent me some products to test. And uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the products here. And what this is, is it's actually floor runner. It's uh, matting that you, you put on the floor to clean chips and oil and junk off your boots. But what I used it for here, and it's got a, it's got a, a, heat, you know, a lightly tacky adhesive on the back to keep it in place on the floor. But what it worked great for was protecting furniture while I was moving it, right? So, in fact, you can see the dust marks on it, right? I just stuck it down to the top of the table like this, or the top of the desk, flipped this sucker over on its back, and just slid it on the floor and then down the stairs. And this stayed in place, and it's uh, kind of had just the right amount of traction that it didn't grab too much and it slid. So. Uh, Another use for uh, this pig matting, um, and you know, and then I can still use this and put it on the floor, and it doesn't care that it's dirty, right? Anyway, uh, and I used it on a, a couch that we brought down too to protect the couch while we kind of drug it down the stairs. So it uh, worked out real nice. So thank you very much, pig. Oink oink. <laughs> that uh, worked out real nice. And, uh, just <coughs> excuse me discovered a new use for uh, your product there. Let me, uh, let me grab one of the rolls there. So this is the stuff. This is the, uh, the pig grippy adhesive back floor mat. So uh, if you think you might uh, uh, have a job like this or you need to protect some equipment or um, protect the floor or whatever, um, this is probably a really good option here. So once again, thank you, uh, Pig, for uh, sending me the products to play around with. All right, this next one is a couple of really cool machine tags, and um, this came in a in a package uh, with some other stuff. And I apologize; I cannot remember who sent me this. Um, and uh, I'll have to dig around and see if I can figure it out. Um, but it's just the, the level of detail in this thing is awesome. I mean, uh, um, it's got some um, Japanese or Chinese, what is that? Um, you know what, I am not sure. So I'm not gonna speak out of, speak out of my lane there. But the detail in the dog is just absolutely stunning, right? I sent a picture of this to um, uh, King Tutley, um, and uh, he uh, manufactures, and now I can't think of his, <laughs> his uh, company, I, I'm so lame, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, he's on Instagram, and uh, he does reproduction, reproduction um, 
uh, machine tag. So if you're restoring a machine or something like that, I will put a link in the description. I can't think of his name right now. It's, it's, it's escaping me. Uh, the name of his company. Oh, Vaughn, uh, Vaughn, V-O-N-N -N, uh, Associates or Vaughn Inc. or something like that. But I will put a link in the description. So if you are restoring a machine and you need a custom tag, he's the guy to talk to. He has worked it out. Uh, now this one here, I popped off a machine um, that was going to the scrapyard. Uh, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, I got a, uh, a, a grinder that got dropped and is broken. Uh, you want anything off of it? And uh, I said, no. And he said, well, you should come look at it anyway. And I did. And the only thing I took was this tag here. And this is an old uh, San Francisco Bay Area company, uh, Stallman Machine uh, Tools and Supply Company. And uh, I found a, a single little reference. They were uh, south of market, uh, kind of close to the Embarcadero, and they supplied uh, machine tools and cutters and drills and, and materials and things like that. Um, and it goes back to, I think they uh, started in the uh, um, 18 somethings. So uh, they were there for quite a while. I don't know when they, when they stopped, work, uh, stopped operations there. But once again, just a cool tag uh, with the the red, the black, the old the old font. You know, uh, just just pleasing to look at. So I gotta stow these away for the move and um, um, protect them so that they'll go in the next uh, shadow box that I put together. Yeah, it's just cool stuff. Anyway, I thought you guys liked those. I certainly like them. So this one is. Um, Somebody asked in the comments of one of my videos, uh, um, or they made a, you know what, I don't quite remember how it came back to me, uh, uh, but somebody was asking, what the hell do you, or what the heck do you use a clinometer for, right, and how do you use it, right? Um, it's actually a real interesting instrument. Um, this is a, a fairly simple one here. I have two. I have this one, and then I have a, uh, a microptic one, which has uh, some optics on it and is more sensitive than this one. Um, and will take a longer verbal <laughs> explanation of, of, of how it works, right? But this one's real simple, and it's actually it's quite accurate and uh, very convenient for setting angles on things. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna set up an angle uh, on the milling machine with this and uh, I'll show you how that works right so let's get it out of the out of its case um, so it has an adjustment here so we have a scale and um, and then we can rotate the uh, the drum and change the reading so that's uh, We'll rotate that that's approximately 20 degrees and then this has um, uh, increments on here and what do we got here we got 10 I believe these are single minutes is that right minutes of angle let's see what do we got zero five yeah so these are minutes yeah so minutes of angle okay and then um, it has a fairly sensitive level on it. This is a 40 second level here. Uh, and what I mean by 40 second level um, is 40 arc seconds. All right, so let's set that back to zero and then bring this to, let's bring that to zero. Oops, come on, Mr. Wizard. There it goes. Okay, so we're zeroed, we're zeroed and zeroed, okay. Um, and let's go over to the mill and we'll, uh, we'll do a quick angle setup with this and show you how a, how a clinometer works. All right, so we got, a, we got an, an adjustable angle plate here that we want to set at some, uh, some angle. We'll decide what that is in a minute. Um, but what we want to do first is we want to we null the, um, um, the level, right? Because we don't know if the machine's perfectly level and what we care about is um, in relation to what we want to cut, right? So we'll just use this top surface here, um, which is just barely wide enough here, all right? And I'm gonna set it on that. So we've zeroed the scale here and we've zeroed the drum here, right? But the level is not nulled, right? So that's what the, uh, what the, uh, am I going, I'm going the wrong way there. Okay, there it goes. Um, actually, let me get let me get a shot on top here uh, so you can see the, the 
the bubble and we'll know that and then we'll we'll dial in our angle then we'll set our our angle plate in relation to this reference surface I hope that makes sense so let's take a look at the vial all right so I'm gonna know and when I say no what I mean is zero basically so okay so that's pretty good so our scale in the drum is zero and our uh, our main scale is zero and then our drum scale here is zeroed and we've nulled the uh, the bubble so now what I can do is I can just remove this and put our angle plate in place like so and then uh, let me change the shot here so you guys can see better what's uh, what's going on here okay so we're gonna we're gonna set some arbitrary angle here Let, let's set a uh, uh, let's set a 15 degree angle. We'll just do something shallow. I don't want this to slide off or whatever while we're messing around with it. And um, so I'm going to release a drum here and then I'm going to put this on 15 degrees. And keep in mind, I can set it for anything in between, right? Um, actually, darn it. You know what? I'm going the wrong way here. So, how f oh, good. We got, well, let's set it for 10 degrees because I got. Uh, um, I got 10 degrees on the other side that way we can leave the setup here like this so what I'll do now is tip this up you know it's gonna slide off darn it um, how about five degrees <laughs> let's set five degrees yeah and maybe that's uh, shallow enough and now what I'm gonna do is rotate this angle plate until I get my my zero back on the uh, on the bubble all right I think you get the idea here it's pretty close right now right there okay so that's quite accurate um, to five degrees there in this case um, and once again you can set it for any number of degrees and minutes here uh, uh, quite readily and uh, and you can put this on kind of any surface right it's got a so you can put it on a shaft or you can put it on a flat or whatever and um, the range of motion here I believe it doesn't look like didn't quite do 90, although it looks like <clears throat> this has been modified a little bit, so this is dragging uh, and it's hitting that screw. So it looks like you could do 90 degrees on this, but 90 is probably not something that you would set uh, in particular uh, with this one. Um, since 90 is pretty easy to set uh, with other other kinds of tools so this would be one for you need to set uh, you know 21 degrees and uh, and 15 minutes or something like that if you had some oddball angle to do uh, but it's quite convenient and it can go on different surfaces and it references gravity so um, it um, um, Anyway, references gravity, and you can null it um, uh, and adjust it within a small range for things that are slightly out of level. So, anyway, that's how kind of a, a quick, quickie explanation of a clinometer and how you might use it in the uh, in the machine shop. So, so this cool instrument came from the estate of my uh, my friend Jim Galvin, uh, who I helped uh, the family re remove all his uh, his stuff from his equipment from his condominium um, and it's a cool surveying compass is what it is and um, this particular one has a, a sighting uh, feeler filer um, basically a, um, a slit and a um, um, and a wire so that you can take sightings on objects um, so you set this up on a tripod kind of like this and you sight you sight through the slit and um, and look at the wire and then you align uh, you align it and then you read the bearing off of the off of the uh, the needle. Now it's locked right now and this is a this is a leet a lights 
uh, lights, and it's marked San Francisco, which is kind of interesting. And it's got a little a little centering bubble in it there that you can see. And then let me release the uh, um, the needle here. So you guys can see it wiggle around there. I have a hard time believing that that's. I you know I got there's so much metal in here that this is. That's interesting that it's oscillating in that funny way. Let me, uh, this must be on a nice, nice little pivot. I hope, uh, you know what? I'm just going to rotate it like this. I was, I'm worried that this was blocking the the view there. Why is it shimmying like that? It must be on a on a a pivot. Uh, a pointy pivot. So let's see here. Yeah. So like I said, there's there's so many magnets around here and uh, pieces of metal. I'm sure it's not reading a um, uh, correctly. Um, yeah, this. Yeah, you know, I got a magnet in my pocket, literally. Anyway, it's just kind of neat, and I I saved it for a friend of mine that collects these kinds of things or really enjoys. Uh, um, you know, old kind of nautical instruments and compasses and binnacles and things like that. Uh, he's got a couple things like that, and he really, he really enjoys them. So I pulled this out and set it aside for him. Um, and one of these days when he comes over, I'll give him a nice little surprise there. So anyway, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. It's in wonderful shape. Let's fold it up. I'll show you the bottom. It's got a little post on it that... Uh, uh, that screws down onto a, a tripod or something like that, uh, or a, uh, a trivet that yeah, you can level it out and uh, get the thing leveled. But it's in wonderful shape, looks beautiful, and came from a good friend of mine, and uh, so it's got some sentimental, sentimental attachment to it. So this one is uh, kind of interesting. It's a little bit of um, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, East Bay in particular, kind of industrial history. So I went to uh, an estate sale uh, at this place here, or what was left of this place, uh, Gillian Instrument. And uh, they're, uh, it's an old company that, uh, um, uh, Oakland company that made um, um, electromechanical devices, uh, military stuff, you know, like um, uh, temperature measuring things, um, uh, tracking computers, things like that. I guess they had a little niche in the, in that industry. Anyway, interesting history in a historical, it's basically in a barn behind a, a historical house in Oakland and um, uh, that you'd never suspect, suspect a, a shop being back there. So, and I'm gonna put some pictures up um, at the end of the video that I took <clears throat> at that sale. And um, the, the owner, uh, and I, let's I'll flip to the back here, because there's a picture of him here. This guy here, he's kind of the last surviving guy. This is Ken, or Kenneth, and uh, Gillian. Gillian? Yeah, I think that's how you say that. Um, and he was kind of the last surviving thing. So the family is, or what's left of the family is kind of liquidating the, um, the estate and, uh, and um, doing some stuff. But I ended up, um, I got kind of a, a special tour um, and got to look at some areas that uh, weren't kind of open to the general public, which was kind of neat. But let's flip through this real quick, and then I, I got a little, uh, a little uh, interesting um, uh, bit to show you, too, that I got from there. So uh, I just love the old, the old style brochure here, you know. You got the... Uh, the uh, important engineers doing a, you know, sitting in a conference, you know, uh, it, this is the classic shot for these kinds of brochures, right? You know, the eggheads in there, um, uh, you know, and I, I count myself in that group as well, right? You know, uh, um, discussing the, the big engineering problem uh, that's facing them, right? You know, and the, the modern drafting tools and uh, the whole nine yards, right? It's, it's just cool, cool stuff. And then uh, there's this great black and white pictures here, and uh, kind of in the um, um, in the uh, in the flavor of uh, foundations of mechanical accuracy, uh, the book by uh, Richard Moore, and um, 
uh, there's a Gordon milling machine. Now, let me back up a little bit here. There's a, um, a Gordon engraving machine, and that had been sold by the time I got there. And, um, you yeah, know, those are kind of interesting engraving machines, but I have a something that was engraved on this very machine here uh, to show you as well. But this is the kind of stuff that they build here, kind of electromechanical stuff. Total old school, got the big fat resistors, you know, it's not really circuit board uh, stuff. A little diacro break there. And uh, now this particular room, I got to go in this room. It doesn't look anything like this anymore. It's uh, basically a, a giant rat's nest. <laughs> and I have some pictures. I have a picture of that, so uh, we'll do a comparison there. And um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, below this was actually the most fantastic industrial private library that I've ever seen and, um, and I got a few pictures of that too that I'll share with you guys uh, that's just this really cool stuff and uh, we got a monarch uh, with a hydraulic tracer kind of looks like it uh, no gearbox on it um, gang drill you know little fixtures and things that they made whatnot and there's our Gorton mill fighting head this is some kind of optical reading thing for reading the scale which is kind of neat um, and uh, let's see what else. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. There's another. Oh, there's another, another one of their things, right? And uh, oh, they they had a, a one room that was just solid catalogs, and that's kind of old school before the internet, right? Is you filled out the little bingo cards in the backs of magazines, and you sent away, and then you got the, all these catalogs that you could. Uh, uh, pull specs out of for all the different uh, components and whatnot that you might want to use. So pretty neat. And then there's a cool aerial shot of the San Francisco Bay Area. So, all right. Well, let's take a look at this other thing, and uh, um, and then I'll show you some uh, uh, pictures that I took at the actual estate sale. All right. So this is the thing I wanted to show you. This is pretty cool. It is a. Um, a shop made, and I think they were they were selling these, okay, um, or the company that came after Gillian, Gillian uh, Machine or Instrument Company um, uh, started making these, and these were made on a, a mill, and then a uh, the Gorton uh, engraver to engrave all the uh, the division lines and the uh, and the numerals. So kind of cool. It's made out of eighth inch brass, so uh, it's, it's like seriously heavy duty, right? Um, but you know, I was intrigued by it because I was like, wow, that's kind of a nice thing, you know, to, li to leave hanging uh, on the stock rack and, the, you know, that uh, you want to check a piece of shafting or, uh, um, you know, you go, oh, okay, four inch, yeah, right. And uh, when you're back in the uh, back in the rack or whatever. And um, or you know if you if you one of them coverall wearing guys or um, or gals uh, to have a, a a lighter version of this like in the uh, in the slit pocket on the side right and just kind of carry it around with you right all you need is an an edge on here and you got a box cutter and uh, off to the races right now this one's kind of neat because you can do um, you know a a hook a hook measurement like so right. A hook measurement or you can do a, an ID measurement like that or a butted measurement okay and then the other interesting thing about this one here is on the other side let's see here okay you see this kind of weird scale here right at first you might think that that's um, the dreaded millimeters right or something like that but it's not what it is is this is actually a circumference rule and uh, the sheet metal guys out there will recognize this because in the, that trade, they have rulers that are actually kind of calibrated to read um, uh, circumference. Okay, so what that means is if we measure something um, round like this, right? All right. So let me get on the on the center there. All right. So you can see it's reading. I don't know, ten and a half, maybe a little bit more, right? Uh, but clearly this isn't 10 and a half inches in diameter but if we check the diameter here which is what three and three eighths and you multiply that by pi we get what uh, 10.5 10.6 or something like that right okay 
and uh, which is actually pretty, oops, where are we here? Pretty close to, it's, it's 10 and a half, you know, some change there, okay? So, uh, um, so anyway, you can measure around things and determine the, what we call the, in sheet metal work, we call the stretch out, which is if we cut this and laid it out flat, that's the strip it would take to make that, that circular part, right? So that's, called, that's a circumference rule. So kind of neat that way that they, uh, they put that on there. So this is, this is a, you know, a ripe project for um, modern laser cutting and laser engraving, right? And uh, it might be cool to make a, a shorter six or eight inch version um, you know, out of stainless steel, um, and just cut it out of stock, you know, straight up, and engrave it at the same time, right? You know, while it's in the machine, right? And uh, you know, put the uh, put the Ox Tools logo on there or something like that. Might be a cool uh, little uh, uh, swag item there. This one was clear. You know, I can see the milling marks in here. They stacked these up and milled all this out and did them in in bulk. So this was a what we would call a, a bucket load of work uh, to make here, but it's cool. I like it. I kind of like the patina on it. I don't think I'm going to polish it or clean it, and uh, it's just kind of neat, a uh, neat piece to have. So, anyway, uh, Gillian, Gillian machine, and uh, let's uh, let's take a look at some pictures of the uh, of the estate sale. I think you're going to get a kick out of them. Okay, so this next one is kind of a love-hate relationship. Uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say it. I hate ratchet straps, okay? I'm sorry. Um, you know, at first look, they just look like this wonderful, uh, lovely uh, invention. And, uh, and yeah, they do work. I, I'll give them that. But when it comes to... Uh, um, I've been snapped and pinched by these things. Um, they, they're hard to store. They get tangled with one another. If you're, if you don't uh, bundle them up and and uh, and rewrap them uh, very carefully and all that. And hey, what did they do back in the olden days uh, when before some knucklehead uh, invented these things, right? Well, they used rope and line and uh, and chains and chain binders and uh, and things like that instead of ratchet straps. Now, you know, I'm half joking here and trying to make this a little bit humorous, right? You know, yes, I have some ratchet straps and I use them, okay? Um, but I just kind of dislike them, okay? Um, they come with a, a myriad of, of hook styles, right? And I have a mix of every kind of hook that you can imagine. I got flat hooks, I got wire hooks, I got S hooks, I got latch hooks. And I'll tell you what, you know, you grab one and you go to, to hook it onto a trailer and you don't have the right kind of hook or the right kind of edge to get it on, it just drives me nuts, right? So that's the whining portion <laughs> of this presentation, I guess, over with. Um, so, hey, what are your alternatives, right? Okay, well, if you're not gonna use ratchet straps, um, how about just some good old, good old rope, some high quality rope, okay? This is rope. Here's our here's our friends McMaster car, right? Um, you know what? Rope works good. Okay. Problem with rope is it's like stupidly expensive, right? This is was thirty five bucks, I think. You know, it's special stuff, low stretch. You know, certain size, certain length, and all that. It's ridiculous. Why why does it cost so much, right? 
and uh, you know you go to the hardware store and you see these pretty colored ropes and they charge a fortune for these things so what's up with that right I don't get it okay it's 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 nylon or polyester or whatever it's cheap stuff right and here's my proof okay because I'm going to show you what I have a, am converting to right and have some ideas around and I'm going to show you that and uh, um, um, some of you have probably already experienced this so let's get this out of the picture and what I'm talking about is um, now I call this bull tape or pull tape or um, um, what, do they, what do they call it on here um, there was a name on here anyway what it is what this is used for is the electrical guys will recognize this it's it's for pulling wires through conduit and what it is is it's it's flat webbing okay this particular stuff is rated at 1800 pounds 1800 pounds pull okay um, bet you that isn't and bet you that isn't right and uh, so this is used for pulling wires through conduit right guess what I bought a 3,000 and you, did, you heard me right, 3,000 foot long roll of this for 160 bucks. It was six cents a foot, okay? Pretty hard to ignore, right? So you can kind of use it for anything, cut it into whatever lengths that you want, and, uh, and then go to town. Now, here's the problem, is you gotta know some knots, okay? You gotta know some decent knots. This stuff is a, it's a little slippery, so you got to use good knots in it, right? Or particular knots that hold. Um, but guess what? Look, it doesn't get tangled. Okay, um, you know, you pull it. Oh, look, it's not tangled. My God! And you can tie it to anything, and you can make a a, a trucker's hitch out of it to uh, to cinch a load to put some additional mechanical leverage on it. So I'm advocating. Um, uh, ditching your ratchet straps, okay, in some cases, okay, and uh, you know if you if you just need some simple cord or rope or whatever, get yourself some of this stuff or talk to your electrical buddies and have them reel off a, a couple of hanks for you like this and go to town and try it out, see what you think. Um, I mean, I used to carry a piece of this under the seat of my motorcycle um, as an emergency tow strap, and if you think about it, if you double this up. That's a pretty, that's actually a fairly healthy toe strap, right? 3,000 pounds of, uh, of, uh, of unk right there if you double it up, right? So um, um, anyway, just a public service announcement. Bull tape or electrical pull tape, you can find it on Amazon. Um, you do have to buy a big roll of it. They don't sell it in little short pieces. And I got some, some product ideas around, uh, around this where you could have a, you could have a kit or, um, um, you know, and some other accessories uh, to make this even more, uh, more fun to play with. So, okay, hope you enjoyed that.